We'll call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. I want to acknowledge that we're in Treaty 1 territory and the land on which we are meeting is the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Ojibwe, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. As a council and a municipality, we will continue to work on moving forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Could I have a motion for the adoption of the minutes, please? Resolve that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held at City Hall on June 24th, 2024, and the minutes of the special meeting of council held at Dakota Plains First Nation on June 26, 2024, be adopted as circulated. Moved by Councillor Nichols, seconded by Councillor Meyer. <coughs> All those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, we have a public hearing this evening for second and third reading of bylaw 24 8763, zoning amendment PC 14 24, CHB Developments Inc. I'll ask if anyone is here in to speak in favor of the application or zoning amendment. If you'd like to come up to the mic here, please state your name for the record, sir. <laughs> Honorable Mayor Knox, uh, councillors and delegates, I guess. I'm Chris Beer, CHB Developments, and I'm here to speak about the uh, zoning. Um, I just want to first of all thank uh, the planning district in preparation for this application. Uh, they worked uh, diligently with us uh, going over this and uh, it was good to work with them. This uh, application stems from an agency owning a home uh, with five bedrooms here in Portage and uh, to comply with the zoning bylaws they would have to zone it to R3 and we felt that trying to put R3 into R1 neighborhood wouldn't be fair and it probably wouldn't fit the uh, usage. The current uh, zoning restricts the use of homes within the R1 zoning of Portage La Prairie. By amending the total bylaw, this would open up home usage to more of a broader residential use, uh, number one group homes for challenged individuals, more than four family groups living together, elderly family individuals living together, and special needs. Uh, with housing and affordable living spaces in need, this would open up other options within our community. Uh, the planning district has full control within this condition used to allow or not allow a home or home from a home to home basis. Um, so this would comply with existing homes, specific, specific built new homes. And also the planning district controls the safety aspects along with the coordination of the Portage Fire Department for all permits and safety uh, regulations on anything that would go to conditional use. Uh, when you look at the um, application, it also shows that at 10.6, supportive housing within uh, Manitoba Red River Planning District, Brandon Planning District, Morden Planning District, and Winnipeg, or Winkler Planning Districts, they all have a conditional use under R1. So it does work within the, in the province on, on this issue. Um, yeah, so thank you for reviewing this. Any questions to the application? Does anybody have any questions? Councillor Doyle? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through Your Worship to the applicant, uh, would, do, you, do you get any complaints about parking at any of the similar properties like this? Uh, I, I haven't, but normally nobody would give me a call on that. Um, but again, um, yeah, that can be controlled through the bylaws. Mr. Beers, Oop. can you just yeah, lift okay. that a little yep. bit? Yeah, All right. Right. yeah, that can be controlled by the bylaws that we have already set within the city. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you. Yep. Good. I'll ask if there's anyone else here to speak in favor of the application. I'll ask if anyone's here to speak against the application. Again, anyone against the application? No letters or anything to be read out? No? Just to make sure no other questions of the applicant before we close the public hearing? No? I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you, Your Worship. Be it resolved and I so move that the public hearing for bylaw 24-8763 
Zoning Amendment PC 1424 for CHB Developments Inc. now be closed. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. All those in favor? And that is carried. Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, back in May uh, the 13th, we had first reading. Uh, and then, of course, it had to go to the province um, at that point. So we're coming back tonight for uh, reading second, and if that passes, the third reading and finalization as well. The current bylaw is there for your um, for your information. So with that said, the issue, of course, is to commence the zoning amendment process by amending the City of Portage Prairie zoning bylaw, number 2187-24, table 4.2, residential land use regulations and parking dead group residence as a conditional use in the following zones. We've done first reading, but as per the Planning Act and after considering the results of the public meeting, Council must within 90 days choose one of three actions to deal with the proposed zoning bylaw amendment, and that's what we're doing here tonight. I won't go through those because we're well aware of that. The background, uh, which is what I just read there as well, the CHP Developments is applying to amend the zoning bylaw. And uh, the rationale is this would allow residential care facilities with more than four residences in a single family and two family dwelling zones as a conditional use. Subject to a case-by-case -case assessment, for example, per the city bylaw parking requires one space per resident and proper life safety requirements be in place per building code. The Portage of Prairie Development Plan policy states, and it goes into what uh, housing mix and affordability is, and then supportive housing, and uh, this falls within those two categories. The application has been circulated to various city departments. There have been two concerns. The concerns are, as one, is that the applicant must ensure proper parking is allocated, and that any type of additional units must reach compliance with proper egress standards. For everybody's information, the application had been advertised in the graphic leader for two consecutive weeks, circulated in the province, public notice is given out, and uh, first reading, of course, was on May the 13th, and as of this writing, or as of this moment in time, we've not received any written objections to the proposed rezoning scheme. Documents were circulated to provincial departments and agencies, and as well, there were no concerns. I'm gonna go back real quick, only because the first one did indicate uh, and then I'll ask some questions on it after your worship. But uh, when looking into some other planning district bylaws, the following was found for council's information that the Red River Planning District group residence leads reads license to accommodate four or more persons, up to 10 persons. Exclusive of staff or receiving family living under supervision, which is very similar to Portage, with the exception of up to 15 persons. Group residence is permitted in an R3 zone with a conditional use application in all other residential zones. The Brandon Planning District, group residence reads the same as Portage stating license to accommodate four or more persons up to 15, exclusive of staff or receiving family living under supervision, and group residence is permitted in an R3 zone with a conditional use application in all other residential zones. Morden Planning District, group homes are permitted up to six persons in residential zones. Over six persons in residential zones may be allowed subject to conditional use approval. And finally, the Winkler Planning District, group homes and residential land uses allow with the application of conditional use subject to approval. Madam Worship, I only felt that was prudent to add that in because it was in the very first report to council that dealt with the first reading. With that said, and it's the administrative recommendation, and I so move that the council of the city of Portage of Prairie approve the application to amend table 4.2 residential land use regulations and parking and bylaw 218724 to add group residence as a conditional use in the following zones rr rural residential zone r1 which is residential single family zone r160 which is residential single family zone r2 residential two family zone and rll which is residential large lot and that bylaw number 248763 be read a second time Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. Any questions or comments? Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Worship. And uh, that's again why I wanted to um, obviously read what's going on in other communities. Uh, again, I consider Portage to be growing uh, immensely and uh, with our development plan uh, in place and so on, I think this fits within it. It does give council, obviously, the uh, future um, through a conditional use uh, to approve it or deny it. 
with the, the concerns that the parking is in place, obviously, and that your egress and ingress and all your fire safety codes are in play. The only question that I have, uh, and I'd asked administration at that time to see if they could reach out to other communities, just to see if there was any issues that uh, had come up previously passed in each of those four districts. I'm not sure whether they were able to get that done or not, uh, just to kind of have a bit more insight. Mr. Gessel, did you have the opportunity to do that? Uh, discussions that we had with the other districts, they didn't lead into any conversations regarding possible incidences or issues they've had around it. All that we talked about basically was permission of, do you have conditional use in your bylaws? How is it handled and how do we deal with it? Um, most of it led back to, uh, at the time that we talked about it was, there hadn't been any major incidents arising from it. Um, like you said, parking is always a concern based on bylaw. It's one spot per resident. So depending on how many residents there are, um, <clears throat> council, it was always said that it was deferred to council being a conditional use that they can put the final stamp on it as far as if a person is applying, say, for up to 10 people in a home, they may only allow six or they may only allow five, uh, depending on the home size and how the conditions meet. Um, but at this time, I haven't had any feedback or reports saying they've had issues within communities or numerous complaints regarding these homes. But I also can't speak to how many homes are in each community compared to Portage. For sure, one final question, Your Honor. I, Your Worship, I, is just that I understand it's permitted in a R3 zone currently. Is it permitted use? That is correct. Yep. It is permitted in R3. That's why it's not on this application because it currently is permitted. Correct. And then what we're basically saying is that we're looking at adding it as a conditional use in all the other areas to make a long story short. For that reason, Your Worship, I will support and be supporting the motion uh, as it was read. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No? All those in favor? And that's carried. Councillor Meyer? Be resolved. Be resolved that bylaw number 248763 be read a third time, finally passed, signed, and sealed. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. Okay, we will move into another public hearing, a request for conditional use, PC 31-24, Prairie Lines Church, Canadian Midwest District, 2375 Saskatchewan Avenue West. I will ask if there is anyone here to speak in, flav in favor of the conditional use application. And if you wanna to come to the mic, can please state your name for the record. Thank you, Your Worship, and council members, and uh, staff representatives. My name is David Britton, and for Prairie Alliance Church, I'm the Director of Operations. Excellent. Did you want to make a statement, or did you want to just answer questions? Uh, I can make a statement. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm also here with Brittany Teason, who is the, uh, the preschool director and uh, future director of uh, Stepping Stones Educare uh, Daycare. So Prairie Lines Church, along with West Park School, has been operating a nursery school program since 2008. Uh, we recognize that the child care needs in our community have grown, and we are excited about being part of the child care solution for Portage. In 2012, we had pursued having a daycare in our building and had been approved for a conditional use to do so. However, we were unfortunately able to secure government funding at that time, and so it, uh, it was expired. As the need for childcare spaces has only grown since 2012, uh, we've once again submitted an application for funding with the province, and we're awaiting approval to expand from our 20 nursery school spaces to a 95 space full-time childcare center within our building. Uh, we look forward to providing this essential service to more families in Portage and being able to support our community in this way. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Britton? Okay. 
No? Okay. Thank you. I'll ask if there's anyone else here to speak in favor of the application. I'll ask if anyone's here to speak against the application. Again, anyone against? Before I close, is there any other questions or comments from Council? No? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. Be resolved and I so move that the public hearing for conditional use PC 3124, Prairie Lions Church, Canadian Midwest District, 2375 Saskatchewan Avenue, now be closed. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. <coughs> All those in favor? And that is carried. Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, in front of your Council, you will see the report to Council. You'll also see the uh, sketch, of course, uh, which is up on this big screen there as well as to the location. So quite simply, it's a request for conditional use and just to allow a daycare at AC3 Avenue Commercial Zone. As always, you can approve it the way it is, approve the conditional use application with conditions, or we have the option to deny the conditional use application as well. Um, as our speaker so eloquently said, Prairie Lions Church has applied for conditional use to allow for a daycare in a C3 Avenue zone commercial. Uh, council has approved similar requests in the past, then the minutes is reference is there for your information. Application was circulated to various city departments, no concerns, and public notices as usual were sent to all property owners within a 100 meter radius, and there's been no objections. It's the administrative recommendation, and I so move that the Council of the City of Portage La Prairie approve the conditional use application of Prairie Lions Church, Canadian Midwest District, to allow for a daycare in a C3 Avenue commercial zone at the property 2375 Saskatchewan Avenue West, which is legally described as lots A, B, and C, plan 40152 in the parish of Portage La Prairie. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. Any questions or comments from anyone? Councillor Porter? I just uh, have a comment to make, but I did have a few questions to start with, but the presentation that you held answered all the questions, so thank you very much. And uh, I just think this is a great thing, uh, especially going from uh, the nursery school to from 20 to or, or the, uh, uh, the amount of children that will be here from 20 to now hopefully 95, uh, that fills the gap that's needed in this community, especially on that end of the town. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, and I'm going to support this. Thank you. Councillor Massey? Thank you, Worship, and uh, I also will be supporting this. Uh, to me, this, we, in a good community, in a good city, we need good water, roads, infrastructure, and I think it's pretty obvious now that daycare is becoming a real pillar to have a sustainable, livable community. So I commend uh, the uh, Prairie Alliance Church for this. This is a huge uh, increase for parents with children, and I uh, wish you success in getting the funding. Uh, we did our we did a daycare as well uh, recently, and I just think the need is there. So congratulations! I hope you get the funding, and this would be a great boom for our for our city. Thank you, Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Worship. I too just want to echo Councillor Porter and Councillor Massey in their comments. In just addition to uh, saying we know the community is growing, we know the people are moving in, we know the housing uh, stock is getting a little longer, it's going to bring in families, younger kids, obviously we need the spots. Uh, and uh, I mean the trust that I have and so on in the organization, uh, I certainly will be in, uh, in favour of the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Nichols. Thank you, Your Worship. Alliance Church is doing a, 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 an absolute terrific uh, venture here that they're pulling off and moving forward with. And uh, I, I, I feel for you for your last attempt, and I'm, I'm wishing all the success going forward here. Uh, we need uh, more wonderful spots to, uh, to take care of our children and our community, and, and I very much appreciate that. I'll be uh, supporting this going forward. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just comment as well. I hope you're successful in your application for more spaces. Um, if you ever have the opportunity, anybody, to go see the current space that they have and see the little cowboy stalls they have for the little children for the bathrooms, it's pretty darn cute. So um, I wish you well. 
All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. Okay, we have another public hearing. For request for variation 35 24, Newfeld, 754 Stevens Avenue, City Planning and Economic Development, Councillor Meyer. I will ask if there's anybody here to speak in favor of the application. Again, anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Anyone here to speak against the application? Again, anyone here to speak against the application? No, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing, Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Your Worship. Be resolved and I so move that the public hearing for variation PC 3524 Newfeld for 754 Stevens Avenue now be closed. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. All those in favor? And that is carried. Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Council, in front of you is a request for a variation. Uh, you will see the uh, site plan and you'll see the um, avenue sketch as well for your information. Right now, the issue is the applicant is applying for intensification of an existing non-conforming use to build a 16 by 40 addition onto an existing building. Our alternatives are as usual. The background is James Newfeld is applying for this intensification of an existing non-conforming use to build a 16 by 40 addition onto an existing building. The issue at hand is that the building is in an AL, uh, which is a limited agriculture zone. The application had been circulated to various city departments. There's been no concerns. Council did approve a similar request uh, for this property in the past and your minute uh, reference was there for your information. Public notices have been sent to all property owners within a 100 meter radius and there have been no objections. With that said, it's the administrative recommendation and I so move that the Council of the City of Portage La Prairie approve the variation request of James Newfeld for intensification of an existing non-conforming use to build a 16 by 40 addition onto an existing building at the property known as 754 Stevens Avenue, which is legally described as Lot 1. Plan 23230, Parish of Portage Prairie. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. Any questions or comments from anyone? Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. And I just, um, just to be clear in my head, I, I think I'm pretty clear on, on where it is right now, but uh, just as a little bit of confirmation. So intensification of a non-conforming use means that this is a building that they're building that's not being used for agricultural purpose. Going forward, I guess my question is that this would is no longer now, um, um, oh sorry, it's always still agricultural zone, but this building is not used for agricultural purposes. Am I correct in that? Is that why it's non-conforming? Mr. Gessel? That is correct. So the original building, the old building that was built on there was approved as non-conforming um, based on being ag land limited uh, originally. So you are correct in what you're stating. Uh, so now we again classified as non-conforming because we're adding on to that existing building that's there. Okay, that clarifies my question. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. And I and I learned after reading this agenda that this is the language that they're using in agriculture type zones, right? So that's why it's so different for us because we don't see it often. Excellent. Any other questions? All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. And our last public hearing this evening is request for variation PC 37-24, Backyard Paradise by Sunco Johnson at 62 Jack Caver's Place. I'll ask if anyone is here to speak in favor of the application. Again, anyone in favor of the application? Anyone here to speak against the application? anyone against the application but it looks like we do have a letter of support so i'll get it read out to whom it may concern we are neighbors of mrs 
Giet Johnson of 62 Jack Caver's Place, Portage La Prairie. We are aware that she is wanting to add a three season sunroom on the existing deck located at the rear of her property. We are also aware that this will reduce her yard requirement from 7.5 to 4.5 meters. This reduction will in no way interfere with access to the neighboring properties. Mrs. Johnson is a senior who lives on her own. This sunroom will not only enhance her property, it will enhance her lifestyle. It will allow her to access the outdoors and the enjoyment she gets from being able to sit and view her flower gardens, birds, and other small animals that roam the neighborhood, minus the mosquitoes and flies. Mm -hmm. We are therefore in support of the construction of the three-season sunroom being built on her existing deck. Yours truly, Ted and Kathy Regular, Albert and Nancy Fair, Linda Chapel, Elaine and Larry Harder, Wayne and Judy Thurston, Edith Wetleitner, Wegleitner, Karen Braden, Vicki Hook, and Carol Cairns, and they are all residents of Jack Caver's Place. That's community support. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you, Worship. Be it resolved, and I so move that the public hearing for variation PC 3724, Backyard Paradise by Sunco Johnson for 62 Jack Caver's Place, now be closed. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. All those in favor? And that is carried. Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, of course, Council in front of you is a request for a variation. Because the building's in an R3 residential multifamily zone, they require the variation for their backyard to be reduced from 7.5 to 4.5 uh, in order to install a three season sunroom. Council has approved similar requests in the past, and both minute references are there for your information. Application has been circulated to various city departments. There have been no concerns. Public notices have been sent to all property owners within a 100 meter radius, and there have been no objections. And we noted the one letter with many signatures as support. So with that said, it's the administrative recommendation and I so move that the Council of the City of Portage La Prairie approve the variation request of Backyard Paradise by Sunco Jit Johnston to vary the rear yard requirement of 7.5 meters to be reduced to 4.5 meters for a three season sunroom at the property known as 62 Jack Caver's Place, which is legally described as lot six, plan 4,000 in the parish of Portage Prairie. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. Any questions or comments from anyone? Councillor Porter? I just want to, uh, um, well, if you could tell me that like they're building onto an existing deck, so they're so this isn't just going to be an addition to the back. They're put three season onto the deck, so it'll be a little bit. It's not going to be like three point five meters. It sounds like it's going to be bigger than that. Correct, Mr. Gessel. So they are building onto an existing deck. They have to re-secure the deck in order to support the weight of the sunroom. There's parameters that take place with it. So what happens in the situation, the request is made for the reduction of the space due to a condo corpex because they still have to have access in their backyard for a mower to go through consistently without obstructions, fences, decks, whatever it may be. Um, so at this point it should be on the exact same deck structure but proper weight supported and anchoring taking place to support what's going in place with the sunroom okay okay yeah I thank you for clarifying that just wanted to make sure like there was there's a deck there already yeah, yeah. so at this okay. point they're just asking for a reduction um, to ensure that the deck which is already there is properly located with the sunroom going in yep. thank you Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Worship. I do understand that it's a condo court, but I just wanted to make a comment on it that this is kind of a bit of a gold standard when you're certainly dealing with any type of uh, variation, conditional use with your neighbors is have the discussion with your neighbors, you know, um, feel that all through. It just eliminates an awful lot of problems when you get that community support. I do know as council, we take those community concerns very seriously. And sometimes that can derail uh, what your planned um, proposal is. So. If anybody is listening, please have that conversation with your neighbors. If you plan to do anything, work that all through so that you have their support and, and then life goes on an awful lot easier. So it was more of a comment about that than it was about the motion. Thank you. 
Perfect. Anything else? All those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, Finance, Legislative, and Property Committee, Councillor Massey. Thank you, Worship. <clears throat> Finance, Legislative, and Property Committee has no report this evening. Thank you. City Planning and Economic Development Committee, Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. City Planning and Economic Development Committee has nothing further to report at this point in time, but there is some new business later on in the agenda. Thank you. Community Services Committee, Councillor Espy. Thank you, Your Worship. The Community Services Committee has nothing to report. Thank you. Waterworks Committee, Councillor Nichols. Thank you, Your Worship. Waterworks Committee has nothing to report at this point in the evening. Thank you. Transportation Committee, Councillor Porter. Thank you, Your Worship. Transportation has nothing to report. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Your Worship. Public Safety Committee has nothing to report. Thank you. We have no items of deferred business. We'll move right into new business. We have first reading of Bylaw 24-8766, Zoning Amendment PC 36-24, 6408673 Manitoba Inc. at 15 13th Street Southwest City Planning and Economic Development Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship, and Council in front of you. The issue is to commence the zoning amendment process uh, by rezoning the above listed property. Currently, it's an R1 or residential single family zone, and the applicant wishes to change it to a C3 or Avenue commercial zone. So tonight is the first uh, bylaw reading. And the alternatives, of course, are to read the bylaw uh, or to give the bylaw first reading and then it starts the advertising process or to not give the bylaw the first reading. I think we're well aware of the property in question. It has come up for council before and currently, as I mentioned, it's uh, zoned R1 and what would the owner would like to uh, rezone it to C3. Uh, the applicant applied for a variation for a temporary change of land use for a parking lot in October of 2023, but was approved with a condition that a development plan amendment which was approved back in February 2024, and a zoning amendment uh, be obtained within a year. And that's where we stand at this point. The Portsmouth Development Plan states the following. The 13.1 is the downtown corridor uses, the neighborhood area interface, and I believe that it fits within those. Uh, the application has been circulated to various city departments. There have been no concerns. The application will then be circulated to the province for review, and then they will comment on it after. Once the first uh, reading of the bylaw is done, it will commence the process as defined in the Planning Act and considering the application. So with that said, it's the administrative recommendation and I so move that the Council of the City of Portage of Prairie give bylaw number 24-8766 first reading and that public notice be provided as defined in section 168 of the Planning Act. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. Any questions or comments? I just, I just have a question to planning, Mr. Gessel. Um, so information has gone out to neighbors. I know the last time we had this in front of us, there was a lot of questions and concerns. And so I'm just curious if, if things have been different and obviously you haven't heard much, did you have any questions that people had or do you think that people understand what's happening there now? Uh, my full belief is, I guess, careful of what I say in a sense um, we haven't had any comments back concerning it at this point after speaking to the business owner um, I believe there is one person that on one of the streets that isn't um, not against it but does have concerns with ensuring that the fence does go up along one of the side streets which the owner has made um, a promise to them that he would be fully fencing in that parking lot so that he will stand by what he said to him. Um, but that's more, how do you say it off the record? I mean, it's between the homeowner and the business owner. Yeah. Uh, nothing has come forward to the planning district or as far as community talk, there's been nothing stated that they have concerns. Good, good. Thank you. Any questions? Well, anyone else? Okay, all those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, 
Our second item of new business is first reading of by law 24-8767 zoning amendment PC 39-24 Weeb 120 120B Brandon Avenue City Planning and Economic Development Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, th this uh, council is just another rezoning application, so we're going to um, go into first reading. And the background of this is uh, the property in question, which your site map is there for your information. Uh, the applicant, Stephen and Linda Weeb, will wish to rezone this property to RR Rural Residential Zone. Portage Planning or Portage Prairie Development Plan states from the housing supply to infill development. And this fits within those categories. The application has been circulated to various city departments. There have been no concerns. The application will be circulated to the province for review and then comment after first reading. And then as per section 74 of the Planning Act, council shall indicate its intention to enact a zoning bylaw amendment by giving first reading. And if that passes, proceed with the public notice to set out in one, section 168. The first reading of bylaw 24767 will commence the process as defined in the Planning Act in considering this application. So with that said, it's the administrative recommendation and I so move that the Council of the City of Portage Prairie give bylaw number 24-8767 first reading and that public notice be provided as defined in section 168 of the Planning Act. Moved by Councillor Meyer, seconded by Councillor Nichols. Any questions or comments on this? All those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, and our last item of new business is award the 2024 Water Main and Wastewater Sewer Renewal Contract. It's Water Works Committee, Councillor Porter. No, <laughs> Nichols. Sorry. Ooh. Almost Meyer. <laughs> Thank you, Worship. Council, in front of you, what you have is a award to tender uh, for 2024 Water Main and Water Wastewater sorry, Sewer Renewal Contract. The issue is to award the 2024 Water Main and Water Sewer Renewal Contract 24 OPS 027. Now, so the tender was advertised, <coughs> pardon me, on the city website, Merck's Construction Association of Rural Manitoba and Winnipeg Construction <coughs> Association. 11 companies were sent tenders and two bids were received. The tender closed July 2nd, 2024. The submitted tenders were evaluated and the bid prices and points awarded as follows. Toll Construction Limited for a price of seven hundred fifty five pardon me, seven hundred and fifty three thousand four hundred and ninety six dollars and eighty cents for a total points of ninety seven point six six EF Moon Construction Limited for a price of eight hundred and ninety one thousand eight hundred and twenty eight dollars and they accumulated a points total of eighty four point three two. The contract consists of the following work two hundred and seventy five meters of wastewater sewer replacement. 300 meters of, weight of water main replacement, 325 meters of water main extension. The project will be funded from 2024 wastewater sewer renewal budget of $370,000 and the 2024 water main renewal budget of $412,000 for a total budget of $782,000. The lowest price bid came in under budget at $717,616 net of GST, leaving a $64,384 contingency for unseen construction challenges. So it's the administrative recommendation and I so move that the city, uh, the count, pardon me, the council of the city of the Port Portage Prairie award the tender for the 2024 water main and wastewater sewer renewal contract as specified in tender 24 OPS 027 to toll construction for the total contract price of $717,616 net of GST. I so move. Moved by Councillor Nichols, seconded by Councillor Porter. Any questions or comments? Councillor Massey. Thank you, Worship. <coughs> Uh, just a question through to administration. Uh, you know, some of our bids on work, we're getting quite a few bids. This one, we, we had two. Is there just a lot of work out there right now for like water main sewer renewal? Uh, it was sent to 11 companies. Just seems like two is, from what we've been getting on other things, not very many 
bids, it seems. I mean, it's great we got the price in there, but just some comment and is there just a lot of busy, busy times right now for water water projects? Mr. Pito? Through your worship, I'll refer the question from Councillor Massey to our Director of Operations. Um, yes, so um, on these uh, sewer and uh, water renewal jobs, we typically don't get a lot of bidders. Um, I think it's mainly because uh, the city, we have very challenging conditions for dewatering and there's not that many companies that can actually deal with it to have the, the correct um, equipment for getting rid of the water. Um, so we have had people bid in the past one time and get the job and then never come back again. <laughs> so I would say that's probably the main reason. So, so just to clarify, so 11 people would take out the package, read what it all and realize they can't do it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Council or they may feel that they wouldn't be competitive, so they don't bother putting in a bid. Okay. Councillor Massey. Sorry. Uh, I just uh, dewatering. Uh, can you just explain that? I'm not a. I know it may be something you deal with every day. I can just explain what that is. Why the difficulty? Uh, do you, what that means for our city? Because this could have implications down the road for all our bids on this kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, Many areas of our city, the water table is um, four, uh, five feet down, um, which is very unusual. Most places it's quite a bit lower. Um, so we have companies in town that do well pointing, it's called. So they have, they, they drill a bunch of holes and put the pipes down. You may have seen that in the streets where there's a whole series of pipes shoved into the ground and a really large pump that's pumping that water and then you'll see the hoses that are going out to the lake or into the land drainage <coughs> sewer. So that's a quite a specialized system. It's common to us here because it gets used on pretty much all the water and sewer jobs, but it's not very common in most other places in Manitoba. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions? Comments? All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. We have no items of old business. We will adjourn council at 6.42 p.m. We will move right into committee and call committee to order at 6.42 p.m. Finance, Legislative and Property Committee, Councillor Massey. Thank you, Worship. Finance, Legislative and Property Committee has no report for committee this evening. Thank you. City Planning and Economic Development Committee, Councillor Meyer. Thank you, Worship. City Planning and Economic Development Committee has nothing to report. Thank you. Community Services Committee, Councillor Espy. Thank you, Worship. A couple of things. Since the last regular meeting of Council, of course, we had a special meeting of Council out of Dakota Plains where we um, offered the apology plus the renaming of that uh, or the naming of that park. So we're looking forward to getting that done, Dakota Oyate Park on Island Park. And of course, we've also had a couple of new docks put in on Crescent Lake. And speaking of Crescent Lake, I have a question for administration regarding uh, spraying of the weeds on Crescent Lake, when it might start, what we can expect. Mr. Pito. Thank you, Your Worship. Through to you to Councillor Espy. So as council and, and many people in our community are aware, we have probably undertaken spraying of our lake with an aquatic herbicide to manage the weeds for over 10 years as a community. You've likely seen the boat out with the booms spraying. Uh, typically, we've done it by this time of year. To get an aquatic herbicide, you do need to do that under your licensing with the province. So when we went to purchase our aquatic herbicide this year, uh, we were told that there's been legislative changes in terms of being able to purchase that aquatic herbicide. The new conditions are primarily around federal uh, jurisdiction regulations preventing the chemical that we use, which is a reward chemical, being sprayed on fish bearing lakes. So I know probably most people don't think of Crescent Lake as a fish bearing lake and while it's true you won't have any type of substantially medium, small or large fish, we do have a lot of minnows. In fact, we actually investigated with the help of our biologists to see if we had naturally fish bearing lake. And we do have what they call forage fish, which are essentially minnows. 
So what we uh, at this point have been told is that because of those minnows and those uh, forage fish that we will not be permitted to use our aquatic herbicide on the weeds this year. We're still in discussions with the province, but it's unlikely that that will change before the season has concluded. So we are fairly late in the season and I think uh, we, the public should prepare uh, and the community should prepare that we don't uh, we will not have the same service standard in terms of maintaining the lake this year. Uh, the public will likely see reeds grow up and some other aquatic vegetation grow where typically it hasn't in the past. Uh, administration is still going to investigate a couple other options to try and maintain the lake, but at this point um, we know for sure that spraying will not occur this year uh, due to licensing changes at the federal and provincial level. Thank you for that. I don't know if I have any comment on that other than uh, it's disappointing, but um, it could be, a, could be a long year for the lake. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I just have to say it's where, oh, I don't even know what to say. Um, I guess, first of all, we want to thank Richardson Milling and Heritage Co-op for the, for the, or Homestead Co-op, sorry, Homestead, oh, Homestead Co-op, for the docks on Crescent Lake. Um, hopefully we'll have kayakers who like the challenge of paddling through the weeds this year, but um, we will definitely be keeping public informed on this because we know it will be definitely disappointing for all and look, we'll look for solutions, but disappointing. Okay, Councillor Espy. One more thing, Your Worship, thank you. I'm just through Your Worship, I'd like to call upon Councillor Massey for something related to the Community Services Committee. <coughs> thank you, Councillor Espy. Two, uh, two events that I attended that I was pleased to be part of. One uh, I attended with Mayor Knox was the Port of Jacks Parade. And uh, Mayor and I rode in the 1932 Ford Roadster owned by Vic Giesbrick, that if you ever want a great tour of the city, we got it, I'll tell you. And it was in the rumble seat too, so thank you. <laughs> it was nice, tight, and cozy in there. We were, enjoyed watching, uh, there was a great opportunity though, and I want to just thank uh, the, the Portage X and Vic Giesbrick in particular for his beautiful car and the beautiful tour we got uh, in our, of our city. The other report is uh, I participated in the uh, Burn Fund uh, golf tournament with the, the, for the Firefighters Burn Fund. A great day here in Portage La Prairie with uh, Councillor Meyer, Councillor Doyle, and City Manager Pito. And uh, it was a great cause to be part of, and uh, I think it was just a great opportunity uh, to golf, And uh, but it was, it was also a very good fund to support. So I was pleased to be part of that and thank my colleagues on my team who carried me for most of the 18 holes. So thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. I agree with you, Councillor Massey, and, and one thing we really noticed was when on, in the parade was going down Saskatchewan Avenue and really having a look at some of the beautification that businesses have done with planters, etc. When you go at that pace, you actually get to see things quite well, so it was, it was lots of fun. Yeah. And probably just a shout out to the Portage X having a great weekend here in Portage, and that started it off, so thank you. Is that all? Just realizing how long it's been since we've had a meeting, Your Worship, and I just wanted to say a shout out to the city for, again, another great fireworks display for yeah. Canada Day. Yes. And powering through the weather that wasn't very cooperative, but it got done. That's right, that's right. We can't control it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Waterworks Committee, Councillor Nichols. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Waterworks Committee has nothing to report. Thank, Thank you. you. Transportation Committee, Councillor Porter. Thank you, Your Worship. Transportation has nothing to report. I was just wondering if I could make a request uh, from the Director of Operations, a little paving update and how things are moving along down on our avenue. Sure. Ms. Bequee Jobin, please. Sure, so we're a little bit behind where we would like to be because last week, um, unfortunately, the contractor w was very limited of what they could do with dodging the rain. Um, but we're, um, 
they they did make progress though they lay base on the west end so that area is almost ready for paving so i haven't heard for sure they could be starting some paving at the end of this week or early next week but i don't have the exact dates but we should be seeing some asphalt going down very soon okay thank you for that and it does look like it's getting really close and the uh, i have to admit the Saskatchewan avenue is really starting to look like a state-of-the-art highway just just a comment on that councillor porter too just because i've had some public comments today is that the contractor had some issues with um a grass contractor and some of the some of the what's it called sod sod got sort of cut in the wrong way but it will be repaired and rectified and get hopefully spring back from that so we are aware of it in case anyone's asking okay community or public safety councillor doyle thank you worship uh, a couple things for a committee tonight uh, i just want to remind everyone regarding the community safety and well-being surveys if uh if you haven't filled out your survey yet please do there's links on all of the city of portage social media the city of portage website uh, if you need a paper copy they are available at the community safety office which is our temporary city hall and um, pcrc so we've had about 1500 surveys filled out we have a much larger population than that and we are really asking for your input uh, to help develop this plan this is your time to get your voice heard so please take the time 10 minutes 15 minutes to fill this out because it would be very appreciative uh, appreciated if we had all that raw data to uh, plug into our community safety and well-being plan uh, secondly we uh, back on june 10th we passed our vacant and derelict building bylaw uh, to address the issues related to uh, boarded and derelict properties in our city. We all know that they can pose social health and financial risk to our community and can lead to a decrease in value of the surrounding properties. So we have identified approximately 20 properties that meet the criteria for this. And uh, this bylaw establishes a progressively increasing fee structure designed to motivate these property owners to actively manage and restore their vacant homes. So to sum it up, uh, we as a city council, uh, we don't want these properties here. Uh, our law enforcement does not want these properties here and definitely your neighbors do not want these properties here. So if you are the owners of one of these properties, it is time to clean them up, get them back up to code, back in compliance or you will be paying stiffer penalties. Um, this, this gives our city the power to, to handle these properties. So please, we wanna see our city uh, become a little bit more beautiful each and every day. Uh, it's part of our strategic plan as a city. So uh, we really uh, needed this by lot to get some of these, some of these houses dealt with, dealt with. So that is all I have for tonight's report. Thank you. I just want to um, comment. We've it's been a week now. We're obviously we're having our meeting in a secondary location because City Hall is closed um, for renovation to do our accessibility plan that's been in the works for a long time and a refresh at the time. I just want to give a big thank you to all of our administration department and everybody who was involved in our IT department who's working so hard to not only set us up so that we can continue our council meetings, but also make sure that they're offering the same high level of services to our citizens. Um, we know it's tax time, right? So we can't just shut down and we want people to pay their taxes. So getting those offices up and running um, was some feat in itself. And we just hope that citizens are patient with that. But just a big thank you to Nathan for leading that and the rest of your whole team to be able to do that and to our IT department for working so hard to get it done. We appreciate it. And we hope that the renovation goes smooth and clear. So thank you. If nothing else, 
we will adjourn committee at 6.54 p.m. and we will see you back here for regular meeting in August. Thank you.